Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. And today we have a customer who sent in a uh, R Pro Soloist, and uh, it's in good cosmetic condition and it works. Uh, but there are a few issues with it, as there are with most Pro Soloists that I come across. Uh, the first one uh, is a very common problem for Pro Soloists, is that the touch sensor effects are dead. So that's pitch bend, wow, growl, brilliance, volume, vibrato, uh, and none of them are working. I know this board does have some life to it because some voices where you can hear a vibrato effect even without the vibrato engaged, uh, you can still hear that that's working and responsive to the LFO adjustment. Another problem the customer is having uh, is some of the uh, presets are dead. So, for example, Fuzz Guitar 1 is working, but Fuzz Guitar 2 is substantially dead. I hear some noise. Uh, other presets are just totally dead. And then one final problem that we're having with this pro soloist is that some of the voices are sustaining indefinitely. So, like bassoon, we press and release and it, it, it decays down to nothing and it's quiet. Uh, other patches, like clarinet, you can hear uh, the, the note continue sustaining indefinitely. It's not super loud, but it's loud enough that it's annoying. So we're going to pop this guy open and find what these three problems are. So the first thing that I'm going to check real quick is the touch sensor effects. And um, a very common failure on the Pro Soloist is the actual touch sensor strip itself. So we can do a quick test of that. So I've got the keyboard open and turned upside down, and there's a pair of wires that come here from the keyboard. You can see the touch sensor strip tucked under there. But these wires come over here to this board with the sliders, and there's two, two terminals marked S and T or T and S touch sensor. So with the multimeter set to ohms, I'm going to uh, uh, put it down here on those two, two terminals. I'm getting actually an open circuit there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push one of the keys really hard, hard enough that I should be engaging the touch sensor effects. And I should see the resistance drop down, and I'm not. So uh, very likely the touch sensor strip itself is bad. And uh, we're going to take the, the keyboard out and take that out of circuit and double check it. Um, but we're going to replace the touch sensor strip if, if that part is bad. Again, a very common problem and replacement touch sensor strips are on my website at synthchaser.com. So I showed in other of my Pro Soloist and Pro DGX repair videos how you can use the sample waveforms um, that, that it shows in the service manual and these flow charts of the signal path to track down problems with individual patches. So right now we're going to be looking at Fuzz Guitar 2. And a good place, I think, to start would be the voltage controlled filter. So uh, point 10 is right before the VCF, and point 26 is right after the VCF. And it shows the sample waveforms there. We can also compare to uh, Fuzz Guitar 1, which appears to be working, which has a very similar sound. So uh, we're going to first look at Fuzz Guitar 1's VCF output. So this here, this little uh, encapsulated module 4034, that's the voltage controlled filter for this synthesizer. And if I had pulled the board out, I'd be able to access the pins on the back uh, so I can probe the inputs and outputs of this. But because I'm, not, I'm leaving the board in the keyboard for now, um, I'm going to uh, probe a resistor that basically feeds into this. So for the Fuzz Guitar 1, we're going to look at the output from the VCF. And it looks something like this. So it's, uh, this is a 500 millivolt per division. So we have uh, a couple volts, peak to peak, waveform. I'm going to... So that's what a good looking VCF output should look like. So I now switch to the lower voices, so we're on Fuzz Guitar 2, and you can hear 
the mostly not working noise that we heard before, and we'll take a look at the VCF output. And uh, the same volts per division, there, there's basically no output from the VCF, some very low low amplitude noise, uh, but there's no output from the VCF. So what we need to do now is we need to backtrack and see what the input to the VCF looks like. So on the schematic, here's my voltage controlled filter, and we were just looking um, right here between point 10, the output of the VCF, and this resistor 44, uh, which feeds over to the VCA section. So uh, we saw a good waveform for fuzz guitar 1 and a missing one for fuzz guitar 2. And now we're going to look at the audio input to the VCF, which comes in here on pin 1. But again, since the module is potted and we don't, we're not pulling the board for now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to probe back here on the uh, output of these resistors here. So uh, before it goes to the voltage controlled filter, it goes through a few fixed high pass filters that are enabled or disabled by the ROM chip. So uh, if we probe here on the output of any one of these 12K resistors from the high pass filters, we'll get the input to the VCF. So right now we're on Fuzz Guitar 1, which is working. And this is what the input to the VCF looks like. I'm at 10 millivolts per division. So we have a very low amplitude signal here. Um, it looks like about 20 millivolts peak to peak. Um, and this is the input to our VCF. So now we'll switch over to Fuzz Guitar 2 and see if we're getting a uh, similar input. So I've switched to Fuzz Guitar 2 and I'm taking a look at the input to the VCF and it is flatlined. So for the problem of the dead Fuzz Guitar 2, we've now ruled out the VCF and everything after it. So the VCF and the VCA are not to blame for Fuzz Guitar 2 not working. So we still need to track down where things are going wrong. So taking a look at this, uh, we've now basically said the problem is before the voltage controlled filter. So it's either here on board C in these areas or on the waveform generator board A. So I think a good place to look next is the interface between the waveform generator. They call it that instead of an oscillator since it's not a true voltage controlled oscillator. Um, so there's, there's two outputs to this board over to board C. There's the pulse output and the sawtooth output. So let's uh, take a look at that for the working one. So I see a difference here. The uh, fuzz guitar one uses both pulse and sawtooth and fuzz guitar two just uses the pulse. But let's go take a look for the working fuzz guitar one at the pulse and the sawtooth and then compare to fuzz guitar two. So I've got fuzz guitar one on and I'm going to take a look at the output from board A to board C. So again since we have the access to the bottom side of board A we can just probe the uh, the the traces for the uh, the ribbon cable that goes over there. Sometimes there could be problems with the ribbon cable or the connector or cracked solder joint on one of the boards. But if we're, we're making sure that board A is okay, we're going to probe actually here on board A. And then if it is okay, then we'll go and take a look somewhere where it comes in on, on board C and make sure it's still there. Uh, but the two points that we're going to be looking at are the uh, sawtooth output, which is pin 2 of this connector, J2. So this is fuzz guitar 1. And our sawtooth is, is there. Next we're going to look at pin 8, which is the pulse output. And what do you know? There is no, there's no pulse output from this board. So uh, that, that's a pretty good reason why fuzz guitar 2 wouldn't be working, since fuzz guitar 2 only uses the pulse output and not the sawtooth. So even though this is, so I guess fuzz guitar one doesn't even sound right um, because it's missing the element that relies on the pulse. So we, we found a problem here. The, the pulse output from board A is not present. So we need to find out why. 
So the pulse output on the Pro Soloist is not quite as simple as it is on most other synthesizers where you have basically a square wave and uh, some control over your pulse width. Because this is an entirely preset synthesizer, uh, they, they have some preset pulse widths. So they have your um, pulse divider here which divides square wave into a certain frequency. And then they have a few different preset pulse widths. So 1 14th, uh, 1 14th, quarter, uh, they have something called dynamic pulse, which is kind of a very variable, uh, uh, fluctuating pulse width. Uh, so they generate all these different types of pulse widths. And then again with the, with the ROM, they have like a little mixer or selector uh, that, that, that generates your final pulse output. So for the Fuzz Guitar 2, uh, we're supposed to have a, uh, a dynamic pulse output, but we're not seeing any pulse. Doesn't mean that, that other pulses aren't working for other voices, but we're going to have to backtrack and find out where we're losing the pulse in this kind of sea of presets and uh, mixing of pulse waves. One other thing I'll mention, the dynamic pulse that I uh, was talking about is generated here, actually from the sawtooth waveform. You get the dynamic pulse, which they show as kind of like a variable pulse width, which is then fed back in here. So since uh, this is the, uh, the one that should be enabled for uh, Fuzz Guitar 2 and Fuzz Guitar 1, uh, this is the, the place that we're going to start rather than verifying this sea of pulse width divisions and selections. We're just going to start back here and take a look if uh, we're correctly generating the dynamic pulse from the sawtooth wave. So we're taking a look at the dynamic pulse converter and the dynamic pulse converter basically just uses an op amp and some passive components to make a dynamic pulse out of a combination of the sawtooth waveform that the oscillator puts out and the ADSR. So uh, we're going to take a look at this op amp here, Z21, and the non-inverting input is the sawtooth waveform for the uh, from the oscillator board. So if I go like this, you can see we have our our sawtooth flying by. Um, if I look on the inverting input, uh, this is pin six. I can see that uh, there's an envelope there uh, opening and closing when I uh, press a key. So looking at the output on pin 7, I have a few spikes, but the frequency of those isn't changing uh, much, if, if any, uh, when I'm engaging a key. So uh, the op amp appears to be bad, or one of the passives in the, uh, the neighborhood of the op amp. So we're going to have to take this board out and, and, and have a look at the top side of it. But uh, looking at the output from the section, it goes through a few more passives and then comes over to Z16, pin 1. So this is the dynamic pulse input to the pulse selection. And there's just nothing there. So the problem is definitely with this dynamic pulse converter here around op amp Z21. And we're going to figure it out and get it working. So I pulled that board, and this is the op amp in question, and the passives that I mentioned are resistors, and there's a, and a capacitor here. So these, this resistor, this capacitor, and unfortunately the rest of the resistors are part of this uh, custom resistor network. So uh, the easiest thing to do to test this out is to, uh, to, to pull and or replace this dual op amp here. Uh, it's most likely the culprit anyway. Um, but when I was in there, I also noticed uh, this chip here. You can see there the that middle upper leg of the pin is just missing. Um, doesn't look like that that was done intentionally. Um, but I'm going to check out uh, what, if anything, that that should be doing and what implications it would have to the synthesizer if it's missing like it is. So I had noticed some rework done to this uh, resistor array or, or resistor network, since it's not really an array. So uh, the bottom of the board looked okay. The top side, it uh, 
looked like there was missing solder. So I re-soldered this part. So you can see now nice shiny good solder joints on the top. Just to rule that out while we have it out. I've replaced the op amp in a, in a socket. And I took a look at this chip here. And this pin that's uh, missing is, uh, is actually not used on this chip. So for whatever reason someone decided to cut it off. Because it wasn't being used. I guess that's one less pin you have to solder. Anyway, uh, we're going to put this board back in and see if we made any progress on our dynamic pulse issue. So I put this board A back in and uh, the touch sensor wires here I've cut because we're going to be replacing the touch sensor. And I turned it on and I have Fuzz Guitar 1 going. And I can already hear a difference in the sound. Uh, it sounds much different and fuller than it did before. But nonetheless, let's take a look on the oscilloscope. Uh, here we go. This is the sawtooth wave. Oops. There's the sawtooth wave, but that was working before. And uh, now here, this is pin 8, uh, which was the dynamic pulse. You see it uh, actually decay with the ADSR. So the pulse width actually changes as we play a note. Uh, but we, we weren't getting anything there before, it was flatlined. So now we should be able to switch over to Fuzz Guitar 2, and unless there's any other problem... Of course, we, uh, we, get a, uh, we get a sound now on Fuzz Guitar 2. So no doubt this probably fixed many of the patches uh, that, that use the dynamic pulse waveform uh, where they either sounded weird uh, or, or just weren't working at all. I think there were about six or seven, I'd have to check the list, but there were a number of patches that were just completely dead on this synthesizer. So we knocked one problem out and uh, let's check out to see if our infinitely sustaining notes are still present. I don't think anything that we've done here would have made that go away. So we have one more problem to track down. So sure enough, I've got clarinet turned on now and, and you can hear a little bit of bleed through. Um, there's a, the, whatever note you play last. Sustains a little bit, uh, almost as if the VCA never fully closes. So uh, looking at the, uh, the flow chart for the clarinet, the VCA is uh, controlled by the ADSR here. So a couple possibilities is that the ADSR um, never fully closes, so it never, never goes to zero volts and, and closes the envelope to the VCA and shuts the VCA off. Uh, there could be a problem with the VCA, um, or it might just need a little bit of calibration. There's a VCA control voltage reject trimmer that, that can be adjusted. Um, to kind of uh, reject some amount of control voltage. So let's take a look and, uh, and see what the deal is. Before I any, do any probing with the oscilloscope, I'm going to see if I can uh, quiet this down simply by adjusting that control voltage reject trimmer, which is located right here under this ribbon cable. So I turn the full range of the trimmer and it doesn't make that go away. So, so that, that trimmer is not going to help us out here. So in trying to figure out where this uh, bleed through the VCA comes from, um, basically the VCA control voltage comes in from board B into board C and it's fed to the control pin of this CA3080 chip, uh, which is pin 5. But uh, before it goes there, it goes through this transistor here. And if I probe the base of this transistor, the, the bleed through goes away. If I probe the uh, collector of this transmitter, which, uh, of transistor, which is the output, it gets louder. So the first logical step would be to check out this transistor because when I'm touching it, weird things are happening. So I repaired the uh, bleeding VCA or the infinitely sustaining notes um, that was uh, caused by patches that used the ADSR and uh, I wound up changing a transistor here and then also um, augmenting a biasing resistor to another transistor. 
So this is the voice, the same voice at the same volume level that uh, was bleeding before, and you can hear it's pretty quiet now. And if I play a note, uh, when it uh, when it decays down and the release is over, it is quiet. So uh, now I'm going to pop the key bed out and change the touch sensor and then hopefully we fixed all the issues on this keyboard. While I was poking around to solve the uh, bleeding VCA, uh, I made a little modification. If you watched my video Synth Chaser 81, I believe, I repaired an ARP Odyssey and uh, it was an earlier white face ARP Odyssey, the Mark 1, and it has this RCA jack and the phone jack. And invariably, everyone today is going to be using the phone jack for their output. But in 1972 and 1973, uh, they made the RCA jack the high and the phone jack the low. So I made a little modification, which I'll show you, to uh, uh, make the phone jack high. And it's something that can be easily uh, put back by someone if they want it in the original state. So to make this modification, all I did was solder a jumper wire across the resistor that reduces the voltage level from the high RCA jack to the low phone jack. So now, now both are high, and if anyone wants to put this back, they don't need to solder. They can just cut this red wire in half, or they can remove, cut it out, and it'll be back to high and low like it was before. But uh, for most people who use this in the studio, uh, having the phone jack as the high output is really helpful. So I put the new touch sensor strip in, and uh, we'll test the uh, touch sensor effects now. So pitch bend is working. Wow is working. Growl. Is working. Brilliance. That works. Volume. That works fine. Vibrato. Is working. So uh, by changing the touch sensor strip, which was dead, we restored all the touch sensor effects. There were no problems with the circuitry underlying these. So we got lucky there, and uh, this Pro Soloist is now good to go. So once again, we've brought one of these beautiful sounding instruments back to full health. And uh, if you have any questions, please post in the comments. Thank you for watching. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Have a great day.